For us, it was quite a natural progression to move from um, having Jaguar and Land Rover separate to just bringing the two brands together. Because what we saw early on in this journey, if you go back four years, was that there's a lot of commonality between the customers of the brands in terms of their demographic profile. And we saw a high number of them had and owned both brands. So as JLR has developed as a company, so it's made sense to bring the two brands together into the showroom, although we will continue to trade separately as Land Rover and as Jaguar, and that's really, really important. Um, for the network, it's been quite interesting, really, the journey. I think at first it was something that probably took them a little bit by surprise, but as we've evolved, and it was two years ago when we talked to them about this, but as we've evolved, so it's become a really natural consequence and no one really questions it. It's really interesting when people look at the fact that we bought the two brands together in a territory because, you know, under common ownership makes sense. Then the next logical set was to say, well, should they fall into the same premises? And to be honest with you, we are not really forcing it one way or the other. Now, the simple reason for that is just scarcity of land. If we've got two prime locations in the territory, then it makes no sense to remove both of those and then go and find another big piece of land because they just don't exist. So if it's possible, we bring them under one roof. If it's not possible, we're quite happy for them to stay separate. And we've got examples already under the new corporate identity of soulless points of representation. The range of cost for this investment uh, varies hugely, uh, and it's very much dependent on the type of investment they're making. So is it someone who's going to go and buy a piece of land and construct a whole new set of premises, or it's someone who's doing a, a refurbishment? So the range is from around 2 million up to 15 million or so. Um, when you top that up over the whole of the network, uh, between now and 2018, it's going to be around a billion pounds that these guys are going to be investing in the franchise for the future. We're doing something that, that no one's done in a time frame that we're achieving this a complete um, change in the face of Jaguar Land Rover on the high street. Um, we've got to recognise that we're not starting afresh and we've got a lot of places where we've been represented historically. And Land Rover is the prime example because Land Rover was historically more of a rural brand than a metropolitan brand. Now, increasingly, we are a lot more metropolitan. So we've got a number of places where we will just keep um, one uh, site represented, and that tends to be more in the rural locations, where, frankly, it doesn't make sense to add Jaguar in, but it makes absolute sense to keep Land Rover. And in terms of how our retailer networks view us, I mean, the, the, the uh, NFDA survey is a great example of, of retailer sentiment. And it's true, Land Rover has ranked up there at the top. And I think that it has really been on the back of the rapid product expansion that we saw in Land Rover, starting with Evoque back in 2011. And it was at the point when Land Rover really came, came up the rankings. It's true that, Land, that Jaguar has languished towards the bottom, and that's really been down to you know, a couple of things. But the main thing has been the fact that we haven't seen the explosion in product in Jaguar in the same way we have in Land Rover. But the truth is that's now started. You look with the, the, you know, the XE we launched last year, all new XF, and then crucially this year, F-Pace. And we're already starting to feel that sentiment change. We've painted a, a very compelling vision that we've started to deliver against, and we've been delivering against it with the products that have come to market. And you know, the retail network are definitely with us. But I, I absolutely believe that one of the keys to us achieving our success in the marketplace is not just the product, but the relationship you have with the network. And I've always put that the right at the heart of everything I do is build, keep, maintain a good, very challenging relationship with your partners. And that will start to reap rewards for both of us in the end. Another important thing for me is that the network plans and the investment is really down to the retailers to make. And, and that really is the best demonstration we've got, if ever you needed it, of a compelling business case to invest in the franchise.